At its most basic level, editing video involves putting video clips in a particular order, an order that helps you tell a story. You're not trimming those clips, you're not applying effects to them or transitions, you're just laying down clips in a particular order that tells your story. And we're going to do that in this lesson. We're going to put clips onto a sequence, add more clips to that sequence, insert clips between clips, just in case we didn't quite get the sequence in the order we wanted, and then add clips by overwriting a clip, basically replacing a clip inside a sequence. Now I want you to start up a new project from scratch. I could have created a project for you, but I want you to get into this kind of workflow, getting used to the idea of starting new projects and new sequences. So let's go to the Premiere Pro icon and double click on it. Start up a new project. You know where to go, right? You know to go to your desktop, go to my Premiere Pro Exercise Files folder, select that folder, and we'll call this one adding. We're going to add, insert, and overwrite. We'll call it adding. We'll click OK. And that's the name of our project. Now we're going to skip this new sequence dialog box and go right to the project. I want you to import those nine scenic clips from Digital Juice. So just double click here inside the project panel. Go to the Working Files folder, Digital Juice, Stock Footage subfolder. Click on the first clip and shift click on the ninth one to get those nine contiguous clips and click Open. That brings in these clips. And now I want you to create a new sequence using just one clip. So click on these guys to deselect them and click this first clip, drag it on down to the new item icon, and now you've created a new sequence with that clip as the first clip. Although we can put clips ahead of it later, but we're going to start the sequence with that as its first clip. Let's rename the sequence, and since it's currently highlighted, all I need to do is click on it once to then turn on that little blue text, and I'm going to type in scenic sequence. So now we've got our scenic sequence with this thing on it. I want to add clips to it. It's pretty straightforward to do that. I'm going to take clip number two here. I'm going to drag it after that clip. And notice when I drag it after, I can put it anywhere here. If I put it over here, then I've got this huge dark black gap between the two things. Not what I want, right? So I'm going to drag it right up next to this clip. And notice what happens. I get this kind of black line with a bunch of little triangles on it. And notice how it snaps. It kind of bounces over there to it. That's called snapping, and that happens on purpose. This ensures that there are no gaps between your clips. As you bring a clip close to the next clip, it snaps to it to make sure that it really connects contiguously from one clip to the next. And snapping is on by default. This little magnet over here, you can see it there. You see it's kind of depressed. It has a black area around it. That means that it's on. If I turn that off and then drag this clip around, notice as I drag it on, it doesn't snap anymore. I can drag it all over the place, and it won't snap to the edge. And so snapping is a really helpful thing, and you almost always want it on. Sometimes you do some really fine-tuned editing where you're just moving one or two frames at a time and you want to turn snapping off. But here we want to have it on, so I click on it. I'm going to snap this thing back. There we go. Number two is right there. Let's preview number four and see if we want to use that one next. I'll double-click on it, and there it is. It's the Grand Canyon. Looks lovely. So I like that. So instead of dragging it from the project panel, I'm just going to go up here inside this monstrous window here and just click anywhere inside this monitor and drag it down here, and I'm dragging the entire clip down just like that. And notice it's snapping to the current time indicator, which is something else it'll do. But I want to snap it to that clip, and so boom, it now snaps to that, and I've got three clips in a row there. So now I want to actually insert a clip between a couple of clips. So I'm going to go down here a little bit farther and take a look at number five here, and double click on it to open it up inside the source monitor. And I want to insert that between two clips. And so I need to move my current time indicator to a juncture, an edit point between two clips. To do that, you use a keyboard shortcut. And this is a keyboard shortcut you're going to use a million times, so you might as well learn it now. The up arrow moves back. The down arrow moves forward one clip at a time. And it does it for tracks that are active, that have this gray look. If I uncheck that, if I make it not active, and I turn off the audio as well, then it won't know where to go when I press the up or down arrow. Nothing happens. In that case, I can hold down the Shift key, and then it will go to any next edit on any track. In this case, of course, it's just one track. I'm going to turn those headers back on by clicking on them again so that we don't have to worry about holding down a keyboard shortcut of Shift. We just go arrow key down to go to the next edit point, up to go to the previous edit point. So now that we're right on an edit point, I want to insert a clip. So here we've got this clip inside the source monitor. You'll notice that there are two little buttons here. One says Insert with the keyboard shortcut of Comma. The other one says Overwrite with the keyboard shortcut of Period. So I'm going to click on this, and what's going to happen is that it's going to put the clip right here after number two and shove four to the right. There you go. Boom. And now I've got this clip inserted. 
great way to do things there. Just inserts it right into there. There we go. Now, if I had said insert it in the middle of this clip where the current time indicator is now, I'm going to open up another clip here and double click on number six here. If I inserted it right there, watch what happens. It splits it in two. There's half of five there and half of five to the right. Here's part of five. It goes to the next clip. Boom. And I get to the end of this guy. And it returns to number five. Here we go. <laughs> so you probably don't want to insert something in the middle of a clip. You might down the road do that, but for the most part, you want to do it at an edit point. So I'm going to press Control or Command Z to undo that. Sometimes you want to replace a clip that's inside the sequence. You do what's called an overwrite edit to do that. So I'm going to put the current time indicator back at the beginning of this clip at that juncture there by pressing the up arrow key, and then we're back there. And I can do an overwrite edit. Now, an overwrite edit just covers up whatever's here at the sequence, and it'll cover it up for whatever length this clip is. Now, this clip is 16 seconds long. And if I hover my cursor over number 5 here, you'll see that it is 15 seconds long. So this one will actually cover up the entire clip and part of the next one if I do an overwrite. So I'm going to click on Overwrite here, and it's going to cover up and actually move over part of the next one as well. It just covers up, replaces whatever's there for the duration of this clip or the part that you've selected if you've selected an in and out point. That's called an overwrite. So we actually kind of covered up this next clip of the Grand Canyon, maybe not something we want to do, but that's what overwrite does. It'll just cover things up. Now I've shown you how to do insert and overwrite edits from the source monitor. You can also do overwrite edits from the project panel. Let me go get clip number seven here. Let's see how long that is by going to the right here a bit. Go to duration. We see that it's 12 seconds long. So I'm gonna take number seven and put it right on top of this last one and see what happens. Right there at the end. It's going to snap to that edit point, and you can see that it's not going to cover up the entire clip. It's not going to overwrite the entire clip, but it will overwrite the part that's as long as this clip was and leaves the rest there at the end. Notice how that works. Now you can also do insert edits from the project panel, but to do those requires using a keyboard modifier. And I want to explain keyboard modifiers in the next lesson, not only to show you how to do insert edits from over in the project panel, but also how to rearrange clips here in a sequence.